So first of all, we're at what is called the Inti Punku, located about an hour's drive south of Cusco, Peru. It's also known in English as the Sun Gate and is a combination of megalithic construction, which the Inca found about a thousand years ago upon their approach to Cusco, and they decided to rebuild it. So the large stonework is the megalithic basalt work that they found, and then the smaller stonework is what they added to the site. You can see the obvious difference between the Inca work on the left and then the megalithic work in the background. And you'll also notice that the, ink, uh, the megalithic work has some major cracks and possible heat damage, so it may have been victim to an ancient cataclysm. This is one of the greatest sites to see the obvious differences between Inca construction and the megalithic work that they discovered in the Cusco area and Sacred Valley and each of the megalithic sites they adopted and then rebuilt, leaving the megalithic aspects intact. Look at the tightness of the fit of these stones, almost perfect. There are the curious knobs on the left, and once again the comparison between the Inca work and the megalithic work. So what does everyone think? You said it's missing its legs, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a small child then, right? I know, but look at the size of the head compared to the torso. They're about the same. No, they give you the impression it's a sense. baby, like on YouTube. It's yeah, but a baby one. I mean, it's a little old. And you say it take four years to the information as cold as height. Looks like it's almost wanting to be in the fetal position. Mm -hmm. That's how they used, to, they used to bury them that way, right? And you see the fontanelle. Mm -hmm. Does it have the normal number of opening. sutures? Uh, yeah, but it's missing two sets of ribs. What is on the right side, the left over there? Oh, that's a fetus that was found with it. Oh, oh okay. So this is like on the right side. Mm-hmm. So Did you do DNA on this one? Yep. Yeah. What well, is mother was mother was Native American. And you don't, this okay. is where you don't know who father was. Dad had red no. yeah. So any thoughts as to what you're looking at? Definitely. Yeah. I look in a side who we'll have a fontanel who is really open and he must have been born like this. Mm -hmm. And how do you get him out? With this big head. Uh, well, that's the question. Well, it was very it's painful. Birth, birth by a species that nope. makes, that has a big head. And, uh, if no, they, but the mother was Native American. Was and mm -hmm. if this was haplogroup B4, we don't, we we don't, don't know how it survived. So well, Waikiki has been DNA tested three times. First by a Russian crew that did not give the results to Signor Renato, who is the caretaker, and then by a British crew who took some of the sections of ribs to be analyzed, did not give Signor Renato the results, and finally we tested Waiki, and it turns out her mother was Native American of the haplogroup B4. So what was her father. We're going to do another DNA test probably in November of 2018. And we're going to attempt to see if we can detect the DNA of the father, which is the nuclear DNA, and also the mitochondrial, which is the mother, to see if indeed it is B4. We're now at the Waro Museum which is about a 10 minute drive from the last video segment you saw with Waiki, the so-called human baby skeleton. And here we find ancient, what looked like pipe parts for water. These were clearly made using some form of lost ancient high technology. They're made out of basalt stone, 
and they are a minimum of a thousand years old. So the question is how old are they exactly and who created them? And once again here is another section. You see that it's a right angle bent pipe uh, made out of basalt stone. It has a male and female coupling. And then here are some glyphs located in the Watto Museum. No one has been able to interpret what they mean. Again, they're likely to be at least a thousand years old. And as far as I can tell, nobody knows what culture created them. It's a great little museum, a little bit out of the way, but about an hour's drive from Cusco. Yeah, it must have been a tube, like a tube drill of some kind. Mm -hmm. But the Inca only had bronze, so this is, you know, this is lost ancient high technology. Oh, is, uh, it would be nice to see some spirals because that would give you an indication of how fast the wheel They have to have something else, but this, uh, the same mark. So it not, it would not, okay, so it would not be like something like a, a hole with, uh, with teeth on the end of it. No, I mean, you, you, you can tell what the tool they have you. Okay, and now we're at Tipong, which is an Inca creation. And as compared to the megalithic work we were looking at, this is less sophisticated. But still, the Inca were quite genius at being able to move water, as you can see here. This little waterfall, which is part of the irrigation system, is still running after more than 500 years. It goes from the mountain tops down through the agricultural area and down into the valley below where it feeds even more agriculture. And here again is an example of an Inca wall construction. This is the second level at Tipong. And now we're at the third level. It actually goes up more than five levels and covers a very large expanse, but it shows the very hard work and engineering skill of the Inca people. And just as a side thing, here we're at what's called the Cochawasi Reserve. These are Vicuña. And now we're going to walk into the pen that has llamas and alpaca. So this is a family-run um, institution. They get no assistance from the government, and in that way they get no governmental interference. And they simply collect animals found in the area that are usually injured or were kept as pets and then abandoned. And a great opportunity here to see one of the rare speckled bears or spectacled bears that live in the jungles, high jungles of Peru. And the flight of the endangered condor. The Andean condor, there are only about 700 left in Peru, but they have a breeding program at Cochawasi. And here you see the magnificence of an old condor. He's 60 years old, his name is Malku, and he'll probably live to be 90. As well, we're looking at the ingenious way that local people still dye wool. This goes back to Inca and pre-Inca times, and you can see the incredible variety of different colors that they're able to achieve. Absolute genius work by the indigenous people of Peru. And here is a traditional weaver working on a small garment or textile and something like this will take her probably about four or sorry about two months to complete. Now we're looking down into the Sacred Valley at Pizac. Pizac is a major Inca site and here you're looking at huge 
terracing that the Inca did more than 500 years ago. And this is more of the terracing at Pizac, an amazing achievement by the Andean people. And after this, we're actually going to go into the complex at um, Pizac itself. So here we are at the entrance. We're walking towards the fortress area, which is the only official way to get in in recent times and also during Inca times. And it's very narrow, so that an uh, army that, try, that would try to invade Pizac would have a very difficult time and could easily be picked off by the Inca warriors standing above them. As you can see, only two or three people in width can walk into the official entrance of Pizac. And it's a huge complex, almost the size of the more famous Machu Picchu. But it's much cheaper to visit Pizac than Machu Picchu. And in some ways, it's as equally interesting as Machu Picchu itself, though again, not so world famous. But if you do visit Peru, especially Cusco and the Sacred Valley, it's a smart idea to visit as many of the ancient sites as possible, because each one does have its own character. And now we, look, uh, we get to look at the main agricultural terracing system at Pizac. And there is the administrative and royal center in the background. You can see how the Inca terraformed the entire area, an amazing achievement that would have taken possibly millions of man hours to do. And this gives you a sense of size of each one of these Andeni terraces. They are between 8 and 10 feet tall. And in the case of Oyente Tambo, which is another ancient Inca site, the terracing uh, system, each terrace is at least 12 feet tall. So again, an amazing achievement by the Andean people. And now, as with other famous sites such as Oyente Tambo and Saxe Waman and Machu Picchu, there is a megalithic element here at Pizac. So if you look at the wall right in the background, you'll see it's of megalithic nature. It was created long before the Inca using lost ancient high technology. The stone is not from this area, but it's from a quarry probably at least 40 miles away, and is very hard basalt stone. So the Inca found this megalithic wall and constructed their Inca Pizac around it. And here once again, walking past Joaquin here, we're going through the megalithic doorway and then back out to the Inca period, Pizac, with one look back at what's left of the megalithic wall. So if you're going to visit Machu Picchu, definitely take time and also visit Pizac, Oyente Tambo, Saxe Waman, and more. And now here's a little brief view of the next video or part of it. This is world famous Machu Picchu. And there is the classic view that you see in photographs. So these are related books of mine at Amazon.com. Lost Ancient Technology of Peru and Bolivia, Volume 2. Volume 1, of course, is available. Puma Punku and Tiwanaku, possibly the strangest ancient site on Earth located in Bolivia. Lost Ancient Technology of Egypt, Volume 2. Volume 1 is also at Amazon.com. 